G'day guys, Ronnie Dale, Four Wheeling Australia. Welcome to Modified. Now a lot of us people call our four wheel drives trucks, but are they really trucks? No, this is a truck. Here we are folks, let's meet the owner of this proper four wheel drive truck, an actual truck. Ronnie. Hi Joe. How are you buddy? Good mate, good. Do you want to tell our audience what this truck is set up for? Are you set up for you know the long haul or just base camping or just the weekend away? Pretty much set up for any occasion. Any want to occasion. just take off with the boys right now, we can. We want to go up north, we can as well. Straight through the guts of the country? Give that a crack one day. We've had a bit of a look at the back of this vehicle. It is, it is decked out. I can't, cannot wait to show you that part. But you want to fill us in with the motor, yep. just real briefly, because we'll get to the details of it, and the gearbox. 2006 Mitsubishi Ganna with a 3.9 turbo diesel, four cylinder. Uh, so we've taken that out and put an LS3 with a supercharger and a 6L90 six speed auto with a Nissan Patrol transfer case. Beautiful. And just a small engine upgrade, eh? Just a wee bit, <laughs> a few extra cubes. We're now going to dissect this vehicle from the front to the back and reveal every single detail. And we've got some really cool little extra bits we don't normally see around the outside of the vehicle. That's it. Let's get into it. Done. Protection. That's a big bar for a truck. I guess it needs it. Is this a Mitsubishi bar? Yeah, standard from uh, when I bought the vehicle. Yeah. So you bought this vehicle brand new? Brand new in 06. It was the longer, uh, longest vehicle I've had. All right. So you're attached to it? Just a little bit. Just a little bit, yeah. 2006, yeah. 2020 now, it's been a while. Mate, 9.5. Yeah, well I had to upgrade it. Normally comes with a hook that's on the chassis. Uh, I did get stuck a few times and it's actually bent it. So I've had to reinforce this um, and then put some shackles on it. Haven't used it since, but they're there for it just in case. When you got recovered with the other hook, were, you must have been pretty stuck then, eh? Oh yeah, very. When I'm stuck, I'm stuck. There's no, just a little stuck, yeah. <laughs> One day I got stuck, I was on the beach, um, didn't realise my back tyre had come off the rim, and I was very stuck. So we needed a, had to get a mate of mine who's got a tractor, thank God, and uh, pulled us out. That <laughs> sounds pretty stuck. So yeah. the tyre off the rim, yeah, and you're in the ocean. Yeah, and three hours of it, yeah, oh, smashing wow. around into the water, so. You're in sweating hard, eh? Very, very <laughs> panicky, trust me. Let's just have a look under here. Um, there is no additional protection on here because you got so much clearance. Yep. But this radiator does look a bit exposed or is it pretty good there? No, it's actually hasn't been an issue um, yet or in 16 years. Um, I'm sure it's getting flicked a few by well, a few rocks every now and then, but that's about it. You got loads of clearance. Oh, you got some guards there on your CVs. Yep, they're all standard, thank God. Otherwise I would have ripped um, those boots for sure. Yeah, it's the first time I've seen boots on a, on a live axle. It's pretty normal for yeah, these normal. trucks, eh? Yeah, apparently, yeah. That's all standard. It's now time to talk about the beast of an engine, the LS3, on this Mitsubishi Canter. Now, we've gone all the way out to Lancelot Sand Dunes so we can responsibly show you the power of it. It's tolerated to flick a bit of sand around here. Joe, do you want to bring it on down, mate? Alright, 
Righto, Joe. Yep. What was in the motor before, before we talk about the cool stuff that's in there now? Okay, so originally had the uh, diesel four cylinder, which was a 3.9 turbo diesel, but very underpowered. Look, I've had the car 16 years and uh, for, for the last 14 years it's come up here and it's great. Nice. But any high or any inclines, the motor did struggle a bit with it, you know, trying okay. to get the momentum. So it had the torque, but it didn't have the, the momentum oomph yeah. and the power. That's right, yeah. So that is why we went ahead and put the LS3 with the supercharger in it. Well, this came about through all the agonizing pain of driving back home with a million cars behind us because we had no power to get even to 80 k's an hour. So we pulled the motor out and we uh, put a six litre initially in it. It was an LS2. Had that in there for a good uh, probably three or four months, which was great. Uh, with the canopy on the back, it was a bit off the mark sluggish, but still went very well. We'd done a trip to uh, a steep point with it and, and towed a boat and it was all right. Uh, but then I was chasing a supercharged supercharger for it and a friend of mine had an LS3 with a Wilkinshaw supercharge on, which he gave me. That's and, handy. <laughs> yeah, and with the LS3 supercharge, what a difference. LS3 supercharged Wilkinshaw motor coming out of a sedan Commodore. Of course, there's enough power. There's no doubt about that to run a truck like this, but there must be a lot of different tuning you must need to do. You must, you must need to really refine it to run a truck. That's for sure. Um, as you know, if you don't get it right, things can go very wrong. A friend of mine, John Ferroni at Ferroni Engines, um, he done an amazing job on the tuning and spent many hours. We had a lot of difficulty with it, but he knows what I drive like, so he's made sure he's kept it very safe. The LS3 comes with a six-speed auto, is that right? That's right. That would need some serious tuning too, wouldn't it? Uh, in saying that, you're very right. A Commodore only weighs two tonne, let's say. This thing weighs six tonne. All right, so now I'll select first gear. And this will allow me to, to go down and use the motor as well. Let's me rev up a bit, but it still holds the car back, which is still great. If the gearbox is not tuned properly, because this is a 6L80E six-speed auto, they won't last. So um, John Ferroni, once again at Ferroni Engines, uh, tuned the gearbox to suit, and I've had it in there for two years and driven it the way I drive, and it's still held up very well. You can hear when we're going uphill, I like to just select the right gear, get a, get a gear that's got plenty of revs ready to go. So when you get to a situation like this, you can just stab it, and the, you've got power on demand. And the beauty about this gearbox, you can hold it in whatever gear you want. So at the moment I'm stuck in second low. And if I accelerate, it gives me plenty of um, acceleration. When people haven't seen your truck yet and they hear this LS motor, you know, it's, it's a very distinct sound okay. coming over a hill and then all of a sudden I see a truck. <laughs> it's yeah, quite surprising. Turns a few heads. So who did the exhaust work? Because that's obviously quite a bit of work in that. That's right, yeah, a good friend of mine, Dom, from Prestige Exhaust in Malaga. Um, he pretty much done the whole exhaust, done a nice three inch stainless steel with a few mufflers on it, because I didn't want it too loud, but I still wanted a bit of a note. And he's achieved that absolutely amazing. How many mufflers you got on it? Uh, we actually had, I think, one initially, and I, it was a bit too loud for me, so we put another one in just to quieten it down and hopefully keep the police off your back. Right, Joe, do you want to run us through the exterior of the vehicle? Because everything. Obviously, the tyres are too wide, so I've had to find some flares. These are actually a cut snake monster flare, if you want to call them, I suppose, the biggest they got. Um, but that's actually a Hilux flare, and I actually just cut it down. It's actually quite longer, but I've cut it down to suit, suit the car, so <laughs> it doesn't look as bad. They said you got something cool to show me around the side here, something a bit unique. Oh, yeah. Um, if you ever get stuck or as if anyone knows me, I'm very slack, so I like things done pretty quick, pretty fast. Okay. So if you ever, by a chance, get a flat tyre <laughs> or happen to get bogged, uh, this can assist you. No way.
<laughs> so I can pick up the vehicle quite, a, yeah, quite decent. Far out. Change a tyre, get out of a bog. You know, if you get bogged, you can fill up the sand and all you do is just lie it down and off you go again. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. You probably need that eye. Uh, yes and no, sometimes they can come in handy, for sure. Mm. Does it help to level out your camper as well? Actually, yeah, very true. When we do go camping, as you know, it's never that level. So um, instead of digging a hole and trying to level it, I can I can use the rams. That is an awesome mod to have. Well, that yeah. come with the vehicle, didn't it? Uh, no, not at all. It didn't? No. It's, nah. That's, That's something, something you added on? Yeah, put in myself. Yep. And that'll do at least four tonne per ram, easy. Wow. In fact, even more. Apparently, they it works onto the actual power pack. The stronger the power pack, the more it can pick up, apparently. So, yeah. So that's hydraulic and yep. this is air. Yes, so that's my air tanks. I've got one on either side with a gauge on it. What uh, do you have to fill that up with? Well, I've actually got a compressor, like your normal home compressor. It's an 18 CFM. Like a garage compressor? Yeah, um, so I've pulled the actual pump off and then I've uh, put a petrol, uh, just a 6.5 uh, horsepower engine to it. Yeah, right. So as that starts, it pumps it up and I can pump these tires up in a minute from 15 PSI to 70. Yeah. Wow. In a minute? Yeah, in pretty much a minute, yeah. They're not small tyres either, folks. We'll get to those <laughs> soon. Where's the compressor then? So you got the compressor here. It's very simple. You got the pull start as well. Just ran out of fuel, so. And that's it. Wow! So as that's running, that'll get to pressure and, and release uh, its own pressure, but the main thing is I've got 150 PSI at the gun. I've actually got air tools and so forth ah. uh, underneath the seat. So um, if I ever get stuck. Can you pump my tyres up when we leave here? Yeah, normally I do that as well. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon, 20 seconds? <laughs> yeah, at least. <laughs> these are the two cranker batteries that come with the truck, right? Yeah, normally most trucks are all 24, but these are this one here, for some reason, they all came out 12 volt. So that's my startup one. Oh, so it's a 12 volt truck, not yeah, 24? Not 24, yeah. So everything auxiliary and in here is that's off right. that one? Yes. And everything on this is just the front. You've got an AC point here. Yep. Is that, so you can charge with AC? I can do, yeah. And then I've got like a, a portable charger inside, but that's mainly for my aircon or microwave inside. That's the only thing that doesn't run on, <laughs> on 12 volt. Aircon and microwave, I love well, this. Well, you know, as you get older, you want the creature comfort. <laughs> Solar's on the roof. We got four panels. I think they 200 watt each uh, panels. Yeah. You got 800 watts yep. on the roof. I think so, yeah. yeah. Wow. You're set up for off the grid, mate. Well, yeah, one day. <laughs> I'd love to get out there. It's like your Armageddon vehicle. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, in a nutshell. Does this battery also charge from the front when you're driving? Yes, it does. That's why I've got this connected here, just an Anderson plug. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why I've got that there is because obviously the canopy does come off just with picking up with a forklift. Quick connect. So I can disconnect that. Um, so while I'm driving, this will run power to that battery and the ones inside as well. Um, if you're at night time and there's no sun. Okay. Otherwise the sun will charge both. Oh, you drag me to the back. What's going on here, mate? Well, when you go camping, you must have a shower and what better to have a nice hot shower than that. So uh, yeah, we just turn it up here. We've got the hot water system there. As you turn it on, you wait 10, <laughs> min uh, 10 seconds, feel the water there. It's pretty cold, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's yeah. coming on now, there yeah, you go, see? Yep. Feeling it now, yep. But uh, yeah, within 10-15 nice. seconds, she sits at, like at the moment, sitting at 25 and climbing. So Yeah, that's good now. We've got an outdoor pop-out shower thing that goes here for the women that, you know, if they feel a bit, uh, what's that? I don't care. <laughs> so everyone else's problem, is That's it? it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, yeah. Very nice. So 280 litres, showers for days. That's, well, not for You obviously days. have a quick shower, though. Yeah. Every time the kids are out, we're just going to be on the timer. All right, that's enough. Out you get. Yeah, yeah, you definitely have to have the kids, aren't you? Because they think that we're still plugged into the mains, <laughs> you know? Is that enough for, like, say, a couple of weeks away? Oh, yeah, think? heaps, yeah. Because mm. oh, this only does the hot water, right? Yeah, well, the you also the sink as well. If you ah. want to wash dishes as well, it warms the water there as well. So on the other side, just a couple of things I want to touch on, Joe. Your fuel capacity, this is your fuel tank, yeah? Yeah, dead empty, I can put 180 litres in it. And what does that give you in range? Yeah, not too good, but uh, <laughs> probably around about 550 k's. What are you doing per, per 100? When I'm loaded like this, six ton, probably around about 35 litres per 100. An honest man. Well, they say with great power comes great cost, and that's one of them, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> what about unloaded? 
Unloaded weighs around about four ton. Economy? Yeah, it drops quite down to around about 30. Okay. Yeah, so it's not a great deal, but yeah. every little bit helps. Well, if it makes you feel better, a Y62 for yep. troll, towing a big, big caravan to its maximum capacity yep. is about the same. Burns yep. about 30 litres per hundred. Well, this is like a uh, brick going through the air, which is yeah. not very good. <laughs> but it does well. This toolbox here, I just wanted to know what that... Yeah, well, this one here, it's um, not quite a toolbox. It's um, That runs all my electronics for the motor and the gearbox. Like, oh, you got you got your fuses and oh, everything righto. to run for the LS as well. Yeah. Okay, so that's your, yeah, it is a computer and relays and fuses and whatnot. That's easy it. easy to get to. Easy to get to, and then you know that anything got to that goes wrong with the motor is all in there. On the lights and comms now. We'll start with the lights because they're blasting me right now. You got a lot of light happening here. These are your distance, right? So that's a, that's a pencil beam, yeah. And these are your spreaders. Um, I've also got a top one which I haven't connected yet. These side ones literally light up the side of the road as you're driving. Mm -hmm. So you can actually see kangaroos and so forth. And the rest just shine light everywhere else. It's pretty bright. Yeah, it looks like you got heaps of light, eh? Yeah, just a little. I like to be seen in the world. <laughs> These uh, canter lights, yeah, they're just quite candly, shut they? horrible, yeah. Yeah, just like most standard lights, Yeah, though. shocking. And you've got a curved one up there, which you're going to hook up later. And I can yeah. see you've been smart with how you've mounted it, because it's not going to shine in nah, not your windscreen. No, nah, it doesn't. I've uh, disconnected it at the moment, but I've got to reconnect it up. Do you drive with all of these on when you're on the highway? Uh, yeah, pretty much. And yeah. in the bush, mate? Or oh, yeah, it's unreal. What about down the side and out the back? You got any lights there? Yeah, I just run the uh, LED lights up the top, so when I turn the canopy on, they shine a nice big area, uh, front and back. Oh, where the, where the door is? Yeah, with the door. So the two up the top. Uh, that just lights up when you're having a bit of a camp out. It keeps uh, the light nice and high. You don't so use them while you're driving though? Uh, when I go off road, I'll leave them on, yeah. Mm. Uh, but that's about it, yeah. What about backwards, like reverse lights? Do you have anything that lights up the back? Yeah, just, just one little LED light that puts a bit of a beam outside, but I've got reverse camera, so that works well as well. Oh, it's got like a night vision yeah. setting yeah, on it? Yeah, that's pretty good. Nice. Communication. What have you got, mate? Uh, running a Uniden. Where's the, oh, the antennas yeah, up there? Yeah, the antennas up you there. You must have pretty superior range being up there, yeah? Yeah, it's not bad. I was going to run the, you know, your normal long poles and so forth, but uh, they mentioned to me that that's just as good, if not better, because it's right up there and, yeah. it, and it actually hits right round. Perfect. We're now looking at tyres and lifts, but Joe's gone missing on me. I'll see what he's doing. Well, we've got a good view now, Joe. Yeah, mate. Just thought I'd uh, lift it up and make you uh, <laughs> get your head in there a bit better. Mate, that is awesome. That's very handy. Tyres, mate. These are huge. They're yep. wide. They're a Mickey Thompson 375 wide, uh, and they're a 16-inch. 375. So it's like a 1550. Okay, what's that in Kuwait to in Imperial, do you know? I wouldn't have a clue. All right, it'll be right there on the screen right now. Yeah, Because I would have done the equation. Right. <laughs> yeah, the only reason why I went for these ones here is because they rated at like 1,780 kilos each. So roughly two tonne, so two, four, six, eight. Plenty, plenty enough for this vehicle. I've had these tyres since I bought the vehicle as well. I've got the rim specially made. Uh, they're a 12-inch wide rim as well. They're custom rims? Yeah. So I've got, I've got them made for this, but I wanted the width of the rim. So when you let it down, it makes the tyre fatter as well, you know? And yeah, I've gone through a few sets, but I've always had these tyres for the last 16 years. There's some big bolts on here, eh? Yeah. And a manual locking hubs, I see. Yes. As well. You've got two valves. Yes. One's a, um, this one is a sensor. It tells me where the car's sitting at at all times. And if it does go flat, I've set it at like 40 psi. If it goes any less than 40 psi, it will start beeping at me to let me know that my tyre's gone flat, which comes in handy because once I did blow a tyre and didn't realise and destroyed uh, it. That was your reason for yeah. insurance, right? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. And then uh, the other valve is it's awesome because I can let it let the air out or pump it up at the same time. And meanwhile, it's it's you can look at the sensor. Exactly. Beautiful. How heavy is the rim and tyre combo? Funny enough, I, I just weighed it not long ago. The rim and tyre weigh 65 kilos. That's actually not too bad. Yeah, it's not too bad for such a big tyre. Yeah. I thought it'd be like 80 or something, or 100 yeah, or something nah, like that. Yeah, no, not at all. Mm. How many kilometres do you experience with these? Well, I'll probably get around about 
two years out of it. I don't know how many actual kilometres. For the size and the price of it, they, they're only $650 a tyre, which is not too bad. For that considering, size? Yeah, considering the size of it, yes. It's a very unique size, isn't it? Yeah, very. Well, every time I order them, it takes at least two or three months to get them in because they've got to come from America. Let's talk about your suspension and the ride that you have in this vehicle. Now, it's quite heavy in the rear, Yes, I've noticed, um, driving behind you, but it seems to just handle it well. Yeah, it's not too bad. I've done, um, the suspension is still standard uh, Mitsubishi. I've lifted it up a little bit to give me, because normally the bump stops are, you got very little um, bump stop, so to speak, so I've given it a bit of height, mm -hmm. and I've just upgraded the shockies just to give you a little bit more of a better ride. And it's a remote reservoir as well, you've got the right, canister yeah. here. How long you had this suspension for? Like the shock? Probably have, I've had it probably on there for the last two years, good two years. Okay, and yeah. it still feels good? Yeah, yeah, no, all wow. good. And you got the same front as the back, have you? No, the front, the backs are just the standard um, Mitsubishi ones. So what kind of springs are on these trucks? You haven't changed it, so no. it's just the same. So when it's unloaded, is it a bit bouncy? Uh, funny you say that, it, I don't actually feel it, being at the back, mm. but um, I suppose it would be a little bit more rigid. Uh, rigid. Now I'm going to check out one of the main features of this Come into truck. my humble aho. Wow. After you. Thank you. Welcome, Ron. Have a seat. It's quite big. Like, from the outside, it doesn't look like it'll be that big inside. No, it's nice. It's uh, comfy for sure. Even I fit under here. For us short Italians, it's even better. It <laughs> gives us more room. But yeah. Where do you sleep? Right where we're sitting. Ah. This has got one of those tono, uh, telescopic tables. It drops down and... Yeah, which I'll give you a quick rundown. So this table's great because you can turn it around whichever huh. way you want. Um, if you've got more people and so forth, but press a button, push down. That locks in place and it just sits there like that. And that's your double bed and it's quite comfy. That's pretty quick, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Everything's going to be quick. Otherwise I don't want it. <laughs> Hence the motor. You're not one for setting up swags and tents then, eh? Uh, been there, done that. Yeah, my, my days are over with that. Fair enough. Plus the wife doesn't like it, so. Fair enough, yeah. How many games of pokey you play to you? One, one or two. Haven't won many, but. Yeah, TV, you gotta have that as well. So when it's windy and rainy like it is today, you can sit out here and chill, but you're at the ocean or you're camping out. I'll take it as a storage, don't I? Uh, Must be. Funny, it used to be a bed when the uh, kids were a bit younger. Oh. Uh, so we had a bed up here, we've got two kids and another one up the top there. Now we've turned it into storage. So you put your pillows and we've got... All your lightweight stuff up, yeah, up high. Yeah, sort of thing and um, just keeps everything out of harm's way. And nice. yeah, when you, uh, when you fall driving it doesn't fly out everywhere like it always does. <laughs> Do you find much stuff in here that flies around at all? Like the table doesn't move? Does oh, it... Normally I, I have it low so yeah, it's less less flapping around, so to speak. But mm. yeah, it's a bit of a kinder surprise when you come in here. <laughs> Depends what angles you get. Kinder surprise, I like it. Yeah, and that's another storage compartment. Yeah. I take it. Yeah, it's got a um, fishing tackle box in there and just a few bits and pieces. So this is the kitchen here. So we have an extra table or for cooking, so forth. There's storage under the seats that we just came off too. Yeah. Yeah, the storage there. There's a little storage here as well. Uh, underneath here, uh, that the cupboard sits on. That's my. Uh, 280 litre water tank, just your normal 12 volt pump, uh, which has also got an outside heater, which we'll see later. Uh, so we've got hot water as well. That just monitors your water in your tank, tells you the levels and so forth. Uh, here's all the you push button. So oh, so just... it doesn't open up when you're driving. That's no, pretty smart. Yeah, you have to have them, trust me. <laughs> um, Even bigger kinder surprise, eh? Oh, yeah, very. <laughs> so you just click that one, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's like a home kitchen? Yep. Wow. Plugged in the whole lot. In this one here, we actually have batteries. Oh, look at that. So they run a um, two oh. six volt batteries. They give you a 12 volt. So they're in series to make them 12. That's right, yep. The solar panels monitor them and charge them and so forth. Okay. Yep. How many amps you got in that? Them two connected together are 200 amper. You got 200 amper below. Yep. And then you got another 200 amps here. Are they, here. are they paired up? Yes, they are. You have 400 amp hours in total. That's right. Wow, that's... That's quite a bit of power. This is a switchboard, just your accessories for your power. So if you've got your pump and something goes wrong, you can always flick it off from there. So that's the other bed we were talking about before, which that's is right. now storage. Yeah, that's where we just put our um, 
fold up chairs and we've got our rods at handy, fold out tables. Is this a refrigerator panel yes. room? Yes, roof and walls, yes. And that helps it stay cool and... Yeah, yeah. cool in summer, warm in winter. winter. Yeah, very good for that. The fridge. So you've got your Waco stand-up fridge. So what are these, is that like a clamp so you can clamp it in? That's right, well what happens is um, these haven't actually got proper latches, so when you used to go off-road, the door would come open. Child lock, that yeah. you have on your normal cupboards at home, mm. but the beauty about it is when you close it, it locks and it won't open, doesn't matter what what happens, you know? Okay. Waco now have got doors that have got self-locking mechanisms in them for campers, but at the time, this one didn't come out with it, which um, I wish it did. Yeah, you big kind of surprises, oh, stuff yeah. all over there. Yeah, especially, yeah, your Kalamata olives with oh, all over the place. That would be interesting. Do you have a barbecue at all? No, I don't, never okay. really needed it. Um, yeah, we just use the burner. Mm. Nine out of 10, when we're camping, we'll have an actual fire going and we'll use that to cook on if, okay. if need be, you know? Yeah, like camp oven stuff or whatever. That's it, yeah. And this is your Here's a kinder, kinder surprise. surprise, that's it. <laughs> so that's our pantry and it's obviously, as you can see, fully loaded. Mate, that's well stocked. Yeah. But you're never gonna forget anything, are you? Salt, pepper, you got your oils, you got everything. Everything's ready to go. Um, we normally have a list when we go out. Whatever we've taken out, we try to replace. Here we are inside the canter. Now, what is this license to seat six people? No, this is a seven seater, so three at the front and four at the back. Oh, four at the back? Yeah. Nice. We've got a fridge in the back there, I see, as well. Yeah, that normally sits at the front here with me, so. This is the gearbox you've custom fitted then? Because that yep. would have been, was it a column shift or was it just a big gear? Uh, it used here? to be a manual before. Um, now we've gone, this is like a VE Commodore shifter, the whole lot. You fabricated this box up? Yeah, the fabricated door. the box and yeah, um, get it, got it all working and so forth. Are you a bit of a mechanic? Uh, no, far from it. Okay, but well, you know how to, you obviously do a lot of stuff yourself, right? Yeah, we like to tinker, like putting the engine in, we, we built all the um, bracketry, like done all the brackets for it and hooked it all up and lined it all up in there with yeah. a good friend of mine who's very cluey. Start up here, we've got the CB, which is your uniden. Everything's on there, so nice and neat and uh, compact. Further down here, and then we've got your, obviously your Rev Taco, your pressure, oil pressure, boost, oil uh, fuel pressure as well. And then this runs off your computer of the Commodore. Tells you what gear you're in, if you want to select manual shift as well. Oh, you have the manual shift option. Yeah, as, as well. Yeah, yeah, that's what holds it in gear, otherwise it won't. Also brings up revs there. It's awesome, uh, tells you the engine temperature, the transmission temperature, which is, I, I really like being an automatic. The 6L80, if you don't know how to tune it, you'll just, you'll blow it up. That's your tyre pressure monitor in the end there? Yeah, this is, um, yeah, it tells me what tyre each tyre is doing, uh, pressure and temperature in the tyre as well. And because Joe has two valves on his rim lock we spoke about earlier, you can lower pressure out of one and then keep an eye on the pressure with the other one. That's right. Brilliant. That's your battery monitor here, I take it? That's right, and when you start it, once you start it, it'll tell you where it's going. So it tells you, at the moment, it's charging at 12.3 volts. Um, and then you got your secondary battery here as well. There's your stereo as well. That actually pulls out. And that's also good for reverse. So this is a flip down as well for the kids. A 15 inch drop screen TV. Very nice. Um, so you've got the option to, whatever you play here, they can see it there or they can watch their own. I see you've done some speakers in the back there. Yeah. Up in the corners. Yeah, full surround sound. Yep. Let me guess, there's a subwoofer in here somewhere. Yeah. You're Italian, there's got to be one. Yeah, have to. <laughs> Questions and answers. Joe, are you ready for the tough questions, mate? I'll give it a go, mate. No, it shouldn't be too tough, mate. <laughs> All right. What are the top three favourite mods for your canter? Okay, definitely have to be being auto, so it drives like a car. Second, motor, for sure. I knew that'll be in there. Yeah, uh, and possibly tyres. I love the size of the tyres. Yeah, they look tough. They definitely do look tough. What is one essential bit of information you can provide to people who are looking at buying a canter? Something that's going to help them or something they need to know before they buy one? Well, obviously, number one, tyres and letting the pressures down is very important. Um, yeah, without that, you just 
yeah, you just dig holes everywhere. Mm. And when you're stuck with this thing? You're stuck. Yeah. There's Very no just stuck, you're stuck. <laughs> Been there, done that. Did you come from normal four wheel drives and you ended up in the truck and what possessed you to buy the canter? Uh, we know that you love it because you've had it for so many years and mm. you, I, I don't see you giving it up anytime soon. So tell us, tell us a quick story. Well, it? initially love four wheel driving and love camping. Done the whole, you know, had a 80 series um, uh, Land Cruiser GXL and then we bought a 100 series uh, Sahara. Beautiful car. But the whole fact of we're going camping, we're going to load up tents and we're going to put chairs in the back. I was just over that. So this is bigger, more room in there, comfortable. You know, if I ever sold this again, I'd definitely get another one, 100%. Essentially, all you have to do is unload your truck. You're ready to load anything on there, work, all that, and That's play. Right. Yep. But if you want to go camping, all you got to do is put this big box on the back. Yep. You got your food, you got your sleep, you got everything you need in that yeah. one box. And all you got to do is connect it and latch it down four times, yeah? Pretty much just latch it down. At the end of the day, you know, you go there, everything's there. You know, you've got your chairs in there, you know, you've got water, the fridge is running, it's always stocked up. What more do you want? The worst thing and the best thing about the canter when it comes to full driving, maybe let's think about full driving in general, tight tracks, yep. soft sand. Worst than best. Worst thing is the tracks. Every time we go four wheel driving, all my mates say for me to go forward. <laughs> so bet. I wreck my vehicle and they can come through without scratches. I can so see that. Yeah. And the best thing? Uh, best thing. You get there first? You get to claim the first spot? Because you're first on the track. <laughs> Either way, I'll just push them out of the way. That's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's not a, yeah, even a question. <laughs> so essentially, you are a mobile base camp. Base camp anywhere. No, I'm actually the ultimate base camp. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Another episode of Modified. I'm sure you guys enjoyed this unique vehicle. Stay tuned for more episodes. Thanks heaps, Joe, for bringing this on. No worries, mate. I hope everyone enjoys it. I reckon I will, mate. G'day, guys. Just a quick message here. This video you just watched was an early selected release for Track Yakka. Not all my videos go through there, but some of them are early selected and go through Track Yakka first. So this was four weeks ago this was out. There are a few more videos over there, so hop on over and check it out. There's a 14-day free trial. There's a link down below. And if you do decide to stick on after the 14-day trial, you get my discount code down below. Cheers, guys. Alternatively, you can go to Patreon. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.